and we're going to thank the Lord for how far and also for granting us yet another beautiful day. So let's all open our mouths and show some appreciation to our Father who is in heaven. Let's begin to pray, please. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor and adoration. We love you, Lord Jesus. Had it not been you on our side, 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 thank you for your mercies, thank you for your protection, thank you for your love upon our lives. We just want to say thank you. We appreciate your love, we appreciate your kindness, Father, for the grace you have granted unto us. For the message you have shown us, none other can do the things you are doing for us. But let's say thank you. We just want to say thank you. May your name alone be praised. and <laughs> Merci pour le ministère, oh Seigneur, que tu dis tous les membres, au nom soit élevé. Merci pour le pays, Côte d'Ivoire. Merci pour le quartier, oh Père. Merci pour le chrétien, Père, dans notre vie, Seigneur. Au nom soit élevé, au nom soit exacté, au nom soit magnifié, parce que tu es dit, qui est comme toi, qui peut comparer à toi. Merci pour la vie, la santé, la foi. Merci pour cette affaire. Merci que tu permis que ton sang coule dans notre veine. Ton nom soit élevé, Papa. Merci, Seigneur. Merci, Papa. Merci, Seigneur. Merci, Papa. Merci parce que tu es bon. Merci parce que toi, tu as créé le ciel et la terre. Et tu nous donnais la vie, oh Seigneur. Permis que ton sang coule dans notre veine. Ton nom soit magnifié. Que toutes les grandes choses que tu fais, dans le nom de Jésus. Merci pour la vie que tu m'as donné. Merci pour cette force que tu m'as donné. Merci pour cette assurance que tu mets en moi. Merci pour tous tes bienfaits pour ma famille. 
les différents portes que tu as ouvertes pour nous, la race que tu descends sur nous, oh béni sois-tu, Père, parce que ta parole est toujours dit, et je n'ai jamais menti, oh Père, et te dit merci, 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 et tout ce que tu fais au nom de Jésus. Amen. Please, if there is noise at your background, you 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 take care of it. There's so much noise at the background. Um, at this minute, we're gonna play the blood of Jesus. We're gonna ask the blood of Jesus to sanctify us. Many are the things that we have done knowingly and unknowingly, which were not pleasing to the Father in heaven. We are going to ask him that, Father, since you have given us another chance to see today, then it means that you have also given us another chance to reconcile back to you again. Father, many are the things we have done. Father, if there be anything we have done, even we do not remember, Lord, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. And let the blood of Jesus cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Whatever will make us miss heaven or miss the rapture, should you come in the next minute or in today, Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us and forgive us from all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. It is you and you I have sinned. It is you and you. Pour cette grâce que tu m'as donnée pour approcher devant ton trône, pour te supplier, pour te demander pardon de mon attitude, mes manières, mais avant, Seigneur, de ouvrir ma bouche. Donne-moi la force pour pardonner quiconque. Oh Seigneur, à offenser. Oui, tu m'as offensé, Seigneur. Oh mon Dieu, mon roi. Donne-moi cette force. Donne-moi cette force. Donne-moi cette force. Pour pardonner mes frères, mes frères, mes frères. Oh Seigneur, pour que moi aussi, je sois digne devant toi. Que tu me pardonnes de tous mes péchés. Oui, mon manière, mes comportements, mon attitude, mes raisonnements, Seigneur. Les choses que j'ai prononcées, que j'ai péché contre toi. Mais voilà pourquoi mon âme te crie pour cette grâce que tu me donnes, pour me pardonner, Seigneur, de la vie par ton sang, le sang sans tâche. Oh mon Dieu, mon rat, les choses que tu m'as confiées, il n'y en pas du fait, et les choses que ce n'est pas la paix, c'est là que ça va agir. Oui, les choses que ce n'est pas bon que je regarde, ou ce n'est pas bon pour même ma bouche, dedans. tout ce que ce n'est pas digne, Seigneur, c'est ça que moi j'ai fait. Voilà pourquoi je te demande pardon. Pardonne-moi, Père, parce que je veux marcher avec toi. Pardonne-moi, le Dieu grand. Parce que je veux communiquer réellement et entendre ta voix. Oh Seigneur, mon Dieu, mon roi, pardonne-moi et pardonne ma famille. La manière des comportements de mes enfants, les attitudes, Seigneur, les manières, oh, de raisonner, Seigneur, c'est pas digne, c'est pas bon, c'est très sale. Oh mon Dieu, voilà pourquoi je t'en supplie, je t'en supplie, je t'en supplie. Je t'en supplie, pardonne-nous, Père, pardonne-nous et lave-nous par ton sang, lave-nous et purifie-nous réellement, nos têtes jusqu'à nos orteils, tout ce qui est en nous, dans ma maison même, tout ce qui est ça, ça est dans cette maison, que ça ne glorifie pas ton nom. Là, je t'en supplie, pardonne-nous et lave-nous par ton sang, le sang sans tâche. Le sang, ça donne la vie. Le sang, ça donne la victoire. Oui, que cette sang continue à couler à moi. Continue à couler à nous. Oh mon Dieu, mon roi. Fais-nous cette grâce. Fais-nous fais cette grâce. Parce que sans toi, on est perdu. Sans toi, on est perdu. Sans toi, papa, on est perdu. On ne méritait pas même toi en bas de tes pieds. Mais c'est pas ta grâce. Voilà pourquoi, Seigneur. Je t'en supplie, je t'en supplie, je t'en supplie, purifie-nous, purifie-nous par ton sang, lave-nous par ton sang, lave-nous, papa, lave-nous, oh mon Dieu, mon roi, ma bouche a tellement parlé, mes yeux a tellement regardé, oui, Seigneur, mes mains, tout ce que c'est pas bon que je touche, et j'ai touché, Seigneur, tout ce que c'est pas bon que mon oreille entende, que je suis parti écouter, oh Seigneur, vous ne me regarde pas. C'est là que je parle. Voilà pourquoi il était soufflé. Oui, il était soufflé, papa. Il était soufflé, papa. Il était soufflé, papa. Pardonne-moi, papa. Pardonne-moi, papa. 
Tu es grand, tu es grand, tu es toi, tu as créé le ciel et tu as créé le, la terre. Oui, personne n'est pas conseillé, personne n'est pas te conseillé, personne n'est pas te juger. Personne, oh Seigneur, qui est tellement grand, qui est 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 grand. Comment ne pas te dire merci? Oui, parce qu'il regarde la situation. Il regarde comment tu fais les choses, papa. Je ne sais pas comment pour te dire merci. Je ne sais pas comment pour t'adorer, Seigneur. Parce que, véritablement, tu es dans ta parole. Oui, tu es dans ta parole. Oui, tu es dans ta parole. Oui, tu es dans ta parole. Mon âme t'adore. Mon âme t'adore. Mon âme t'adore. Mon âme t'adore. Parce que tu es réel. Oui, ton nom Seigneur. Le commencement est la fin. Le commencement est la fin. Je bénis ton nom Seigneur. Je bénis ton nom Seigneur. Le nom de Jésus. Il est alors le Seigneur. 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 Il est alors le Mama <laughs> Si <laughs> I was Oh, my 
are the Almighty God. You are the Creator. You are the Inventor. You are the One that I am. The I am that I am. You are the Beginning and the End. The Author and Finisher of our Creator. Father, who is like you? Jehovah, who is like you? Who can be compared unto you? Nothing can be compared unto you. You are bigger than what people say. Jehovah, you are bigger than what people say. Jehovah, I want us to be silent before our Father. The presence of the Lord is here. So we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to exalt him in your quietness. I want you to lift the name of the Lord high in your, in your quietness. Worship his, his, his holy name. Exalt his holy name. Tell him that there is nothing that you look up to than him. There is nothing that can be compared unto him. 
Beloved, he is God alone. Nothing is like him. Nobody, none of the principalities can be measured up to him. None of them is like him. Words are not enough to describe this kind of God. And that is why he is God. Worship him and think about his greatness. Think about his greatness. Think about his greatness. In Jesus' name, have you worship? Amen. Oh. All right. So, um, we thank God for how far He's brought us, and um, at this point, um, I will hand over to our sister to. Bring us the word of God. Amen. And now Amen. Shall maybe lead us into prayers. Amen. 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 In you, Saba, when you are well, oh, 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 you are Lord, 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 you are you are you the angels are singing. You are worthy, O Lord. Oh, they are singing. You are worthy, O Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The heavenly hosts are singing and praising the Lord continually. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we in the house of God today must also rejoice that we are in the presence of our Father. Amen. 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 Before we listen to the word of God, we're going to do the special honor that our Lord Jesus Christ has bestowed upon us. So without humility, let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. I read in Jesus' name. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, he had sapped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Then it goes on to say that for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drink unworthily eats and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the Lord, with the world. Amen. It's a very it's a very powerful, powerful instruction and a caution from our Lord Jesus Christ through the apostle to us. So we're going to do the other way around. We're going to die with the Lord and then we will listen to the word of God. Amen. We want the power to, to be full in us. So lift your bread and your, your wine as we pray that our dear Lord Jesus, who is right here with us, because we know he accepted our worship, that it will turn into his true blood and his true flesh is taking away our infirmities, physical sickness, spiritual sickness, any blindness, any confusion, that our understanding will be enlightened, that we will, we will be lifted from one faith level to another, and everything that we are desi desiring spiritually to grow, the growth, that our main focus is that we will all come to the full faith, which is the goal of our Lord Jesus Christ. We all come into the full faith. That we will, Christ will be fully formed in us. Hallelujah. So let's lift it up, begin to pray. And I turn this blood this wine into your blood, this uh, bread into your body. Let it heal me. Begin to pray right now. Kandoro bushanda raba si yandere bebe. Rikondoro bokoto yande ki andara bashanda raba si yande. Ibras ka brandoro bosho yandere bushanda raba ba. Si branda raba shondo yande. Kandoro bushanda raba boko yandere bosho koto yandere bushanda raba bori yandere bebe. No ba kasata ya mohanda raba beba. May you bring healing to us, O Lord. May you bring deliverance to our souls, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, bring healing to us. Empower us through your, your blood and your flesh in the name of Jesus. Let every sickness depart right now, even as we die with you. Let every sickness depart. Let it depart. Let it depart right now. Let there be total healing, total healing and deliverance right now. Any weakness. Kantoro bo shandere bo shukuto yandere. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, let there be an impartation right now. In the name of Jesus, let there be an impartation. Let there be an impartation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, wipe away our sins, wipe away our infirmities. Father, and strengthen us, O Lord. Strengthen us, O Lord. Increase us in the faith, O Lord. Our desire for you, let it be increased as we drink your blood. We take your flesh in the name of Jesus Christ, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire be ignited more and more and more and more and more and more and more right from your heart. In the church, in our household, in the community, wherever we find us, in the name of Jesus Christ, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Heal our souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our bread and our wine in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's begin to thank the Lord Jesus for giving us. The, let's begin to thank the Lord for giving us the grace, the grace to die with Him, and the power He has bestowed upon us right now. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, amen, amen. That we will continue to do greater works for Him in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oui, le même que je serai une vie de vie de pour des grands privilèges pour ta grâce. Merci, oh Lord, your grace, oh Lord, to die with you, that we don't come to the table and die with you. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Amen. We thank our living God for how far he has brought us. Amen. Amen. Listen to the word of God. Shall we bow down our heads, please? In your silence, commit yourself, your heart, to the Lord, that he will minister. You will hear nothing but Christ Jesus. You will see nothing but Jesus Christ. Because it's all about him. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus today. It's all about Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the praise. Father, we give you all the honor and adoration. Father, it's before you we have come. Father, we are under your feet. May you minister to our souls. May you minister to our spirit. May you minister to our body. May you minister to our heart. We need transformation. We need to live in the practicality of your word. We don't want to be deceivers of our own souls. Always hearing, but never doing. Father, help us break and mold us 
into your very self and image, just as you were molded into the very image of our Father. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We know you are in our midst, and you will continue to be with us. I humble my soul, my heart. Be greater in your word. Be greatest in your word. Be exalted in your word. Father, as your word comes, there is healing in your word. You send forth your word to bring healing, to heal sicknesses and disease. Let there be deliverance right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be deliverance through your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be deliverance through your word. Healing has come through your word. The power in the word. Break every yoke and chains. Anyone oppressed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be set free. Be set free. Thank you because you always hear us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank the living God. Amen. He is a Amen. good God. He is the good God. In fact, he loves us so much. We cannot fathom and understand why he loves us. And then you ask yourself, what have I done? What did I do to deserve this mercy and grace? But it is just grace and mercy. He's just God and he loves us. Hallelujah. We simply don't have any, any reason why. He's just God and he loves us. Hallelujah. Amen. We praise the living God for gathering us once again under his feet. The grace and the peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto us all. Amen. Amen. I stand on behalf of my family to say we love you and we cherish all of you for being part of our lives day in and day out for the great fellowship. And we know that it's not just going to be on this earth and that we're going to continue the fellowship after we've been taken home. Hallelujah. For over a month now, we have been studying and learning about love. The first seed or the first fruit found in Galatians chapter 5. If you've not read it yet, please, with all humility, every day make it a point to read it. Because the Lord has given to us our theme for the whole year that we will bear the fruit of the spirit, which is our human spirit. And it comes about as we become born again. Our spirit becomes what? Born again. The Holy Spirit come and reside in our spirit. And due to that, we begin to demonstrate, we begin to display in our nature, in everything that we do. That seed begins to germinate. That seed begins to germinate. It begins to grow. And so you and I, the Lord is watching us. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is seeing, is looking to see that this fruit, and without it, there's no heaven. Without this nine fruit, there is no heaven. We can have all the giftings in the world that the heavenly can release unto us through praise. But without the seed being demonstrable, meaning everywhere that you go, the seed shows that indeed, I have Christ Jesus in me as I claim. You have Christ as you claim. Hallelujah. And we couldn't just uh, talk about love without starting it with the Father God, the love of the Father. The love that he demonstrated from the spiritual to the physical. We say, may the Lord's name be praised. He who loved us even when we were sinners and still love us, even when we live in ignorance, even when we, we bust like, even when we, we, we take the truth and still do whatever we like. The love is awesome. The love is great. Hallelujah. So we have learned the love of the Father to some level. It's not all. We haven't learned it all. But we have learned it to some level, to, to the level where you and I now know what it costs God. What it cost God. The sacrifice 
what was done in the spiritual and had it manifest in the physical. Hallelujah. And as we continue, this love cannot be complete again. As we look into, still looking into the love of the Father, if we don't speak about the love of the Son, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, it can never be complete. Because after we are done thoroughly searching into the love of the Son, which is Jesus Christ, then we will dive into the love of the early disciples, the love that they also demonstrated. And the example, the template they have left, the legacy they have left for you and myself because we are the continuation of the acts of the apostles, the works and the deeds of the apostles, of the early saints, those who believed in Christ and demonstrated Christ in their day-to-day -day lifestyle. Hallelujah. And so from this time forward till we are done digging into the love of the Son, which is going to be selected scriptures from all the four Gospels in the, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. So it's a teaching series. We're going to take it little by little so that we really grasp, meaning we catch the revelation, we catch the truth. Not only are we to catch it, but after today, what the little that we will learn today, God will want to see us practice it. Hallelujah. God will want to see us what? Practicing it. So these teachings is from selected scriptures. And it's, it's to open us, our heart, is to fill us with the unconditional love of God, which he practically demonstrated on this earth. You know, so we have to be reminded every day as an evangelistic uh, person that Jesus Christ is God in human flesh, according to Colossians 1.15 and Hebrews 1.3. And if any of us, any of us, all of us, if we truly have the spirit of evangelism and truly want to win souls, many souls for that matter, for Christ into his kingdom, there are common scriptures like Hebrews 1 3 and Colossians 1 15. It should be at our fingertips because it talks about Jesus being the express image of God. Jesus being the, the, the God in the physical, the God who came in the physical so that we can experience Him. So that when you meet the atheists, you can base on the Bible to win them for Christ. Those who, who, who think that there's no God, you can use these common scriptures. We can't learn it and say, oh, I forgot it. It's a roundabout way of saying that Jesus, I love you, but I don't love you enough. Yes, because if, if you live with a husband that you love so much, you live with a wife that you love so much, a sister that you love so much, and they keep telling you something and you say, oh, I don't, the next minute you say, I don't remember what you said. It means there's something wrong with that love that you have for that sister. There's absolutely something wrong. Definitely something wrong. So the hypocrisy in our love has to stop. And it starts from today. Hallelujah. It has to start from now. Amen. Because God is counting on us. So the aim, the sole aim or goals for this teaching series from today going, and it's going to be on the Sundays, it's about the practical or the physical love of God the Father, which he demonstrated through the love of Christ Jesus on the earth. Hallelujah. It is to, to bring out. So we are looking to every bit of Jesus Christ's love, uh, life on this earth. We are going through all the four Gospels. But we are using selected scriptures. We are using selected scriptures. We're going to select some unique verses and chapters. And then talk about why the intent, the motive behind what Jesus did, what Jesus said. Hallelujah. And so the teaching is supposed to reveal to us our true nature. As we see what Christ did, then you ask yourself, ha, 
I call myself Christian. I claim that Jesus lives within me. This is what Jesus did, according to the Bible. Have I done an inch of it? And I'm talking to myself. Then you two will be asking yourself, have I done half, quarter of it? Have I even considered that? Have I even read it? Because it will start from reading it to know it first. Then you'll be able to what? Put it into practice. So truthfully, if we have been living a lie while we are claiming to be Christians, and if we allow this love that we are looking deeply into to overflow in our hearts, then we will know where we stand and what we ought to start doing. And as we go through these teachings, as we open ourselves up, it is going to force and when I say force, meaning it's going to force, cast out the old Adamic nature in us to disappear. The old self that doesn't like people, maybe for a period of time. And I'm talking about myself. You to look through yourself. See where you fall short. Amen? See where you fall short. The word of God always come to rebuke, to correct, to train in righteousness, to reshape us, to make us fully ready for his coming. Fully ready and, and, and to be well accepted of the beloved son, Jesus Christ. Because we can't continue to live in a charade. We can't continue to live in hypocrisy and still claim God. And that is why some of us, our prayer will never be answered. Because God does not see you. You're a hypocrite. I am a hypocrite. God is not seeing us. You say like father, like son. That's a general statement. And it's in the Bible as well. Like mother, like daughter. So if Jesus is my father, I will sing about it. But nothing of my character shows Jesus in it. Who am I fooling? Hallelujah. Who am I deceiving? I'm deceiving myself. And that is why he will not hear me. He doesn't listen to the prayer of the hypocrite. In fact, he exposes the hypocrite. Not because he hates them, but he loves them. So today he's, uh, he's going to expose our weakness through the demonstration of his love. Always have that at the back of your mind. Hallelujah. He's going to expose our hypocrisy. In fact, I feel guilty already when I began to search into the Gospels again. I've read it, but I'm reading it all over again. And I was like, whoa, I fall way too short, below the standard, below the standard. So as the word is coming, beloved, and I'm stressing on this, not because I don't know what to say next, but so you, we will make the word practical in our life. Don't, don't just, we can't just come and listen every day. But nothing practical is happening. Nothing is really, no action is done. No action is done. Let's understand that God the Father did not just sit in his throne, you know, and spoke about how much he loves humanity. He backed his love message by action. Hallelujah. He backed it by action. And his action, his word was, for God so loved the world. He loved the world. He loved us, those he has created. And the action was, he gave his son. And the more action is that Christ demonstrated more love of the father. So whilst Jesus practically walked on this earth, everything that Christ did, everything, and this is forcing us to go back to read the, the four Gospels again. And if you've never read any book before, I know the, in this ministry, the entire church has read the book of Matthew. If you were not here with us when we started, please, with all humility, get in the Gospels and begin to read the actions of Christ. This is the physical demonstration of the love of God the Father. 
So he just didn't sit up there and said, I love the world. He backed it with action. I cannot claim I love God. I love Jesus and Jesus' princess. Yet my every thought, it starts from the thought, the brain, what is happening in the brains, our actions and inactions. Jesus, God backed his words with Christ coming. Hallelujah. So every scripture we read about Jesus' actions has the original intent as love, God's love for humanity. So every time the Lord is teaching us something right from today, I have to compare it with my everyday lifestyle, my deep thoughts, 24-7, 24 hours in a day. What do I think about? Where does my mind roam to? On what am I thinking about? My thoughts, nobody can see or hear me thinking, but it's only God. Only God knows our thoughts. David said, even before I perceive something in my mind, you already know it. David just didn't say it because he wanted to praise God. God made him to say David was a prophet. God was telling humanity, look, before you start thinking evil, I know you were going to think evil. And, and the practical example is Cain. Cain was practically thinking evil. The next day to kill Abel. And God knocked on his door and said, sin is at your door. Sin is behind your brain. It's trying to overtake your whole brain and make you do an action. But master it. Control your brain. Control what is happening in your heart right now. So what we perceive in the heart, it, it crawls into the brain. And our nerves begin to shake. And we begin to move on it. Know that God knows it all. God just didn't design man and sat there and said, I love man. Man has sinned. So, so what? Let them continue to do whatever. He backed his words with action. He came down to the filthiness of this weak body. And everywhere he went, he demonstrated love. And it goes into our actions and inactions. Inactions means the things that we were supposed to do, but we refuse out of pride. We refuse out of ignorance. We refuse out of whatever uh, actions somebody did to us, out of anger. And then the action, the things that we actually did, that never, never had any iota of love in it. Then every day, every time you pop the question, where is the love of the Father in me? From today, begin to ask yourself every day, where is the love of God in this action that I just took? This, this thought that just uh, migrated from my heart to my brain, where is the love in it? Does this really show who uh, a true child of God filled with love? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I, if I, the whole last night, even at work and the, the time before the word time, I, I was reading the gospel. I was reading some chapters over. I was like, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm guilty of everything that you did. I'm guilty. Have mercy on me. I was pleading for mercy. And the ability to start back everything that I understand with action more than what I'm doing. And I'm honestly praying that as I do better, you also do the same. So don't, don't, don't let us have a guilty conscience. Oh, oh this one, I'm, I, I'm, I'm able to do that. You know, because we have some people that think they've, they've, they've arrived, they know it all. They, they, they know better than even the Bible or God himself. They are too smart. If you believe you are not guilty, then ignore the truth that the Lord is going to reveal to us. But if you know deep down within you, you are guilty, then we must, we must all repent and prove our love. Hallelujah. We're going to start with a selected scripture from 
Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And again, look, the same chapter 4, verse 14 also speak about what we are starting with right now. The Bible says that, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Praise God. See, one thing the Lord was making me to understand as I was preparing this teaching, the enemy will give us, you and myself, hearers of this truth, the enemy will give us excuse that we mortals can never be like or we can never compare to Jesus Christ because he was God. You will even hear some men of God, probably myself, have said that before. That we are just mortals. Oh, sin has you know, consumed our heart, blah, blah, blah. The excuse that we always find when we want to sin, when we want to live in hypocrisy, it's about time we deal with that. We get rid of that completely. Luke chapter 4, 14 talks about how Jesus was full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And Luke chapter 1, the very uh, 4, chapter 4, verse 1, says that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't sit down again for the devil to tell me I'm just human. And Jesus was fully God. And so I can't compare, or I can't be like him, or I can't do anything about that. I have to use scriptures to answer the devil, saying that Jesus was fully man as well. If the enemy is spewing something in your heart, and your mind, that you know, you are, you are trying too hard, you can't do this, Jesus was God. And you are just mere mortal, born of a woman. Tell him that Jesus was also man, fully man. He had blood running through his veins. Because when they, they used the spear in his wrist, water and blood came out. If they put the spear through my wrist, water and blood will come out. So when they, when they pierced Jesus, it wasn't air that was coming out. It was blood. It, it is about time we quote the enemy scriptures. Tell him he was fully man as well. Now the secret of Christ Jesus' ability to demonstrate the love of the Father was because he was full of the Holy Ghost. This was what the Lord was making me to understand. So please have it at the back of your mind. If from today, if we can truly demonstrate love, because with, with your own strength, you can never do it. I cannot do it. We can never, no matter how hard you try. See, we can try for a week, maybe a month. Even some might even try harder to a year. But I tell you, to, to attain three years of love without hypocrisy, it will take the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. It will take you overflowing in the Holy Spirit. It's not a joke. It's not math, math. It is not mere talk. Hallelujah. We won't just be talking about it. It's not easy to do it, beloved. It's as simple as that. It's not easy. But with the Holy Ghost in us, we stand a better chance, an advantage to allow the unconditional love to sprang forth in us to germinate and start overflowing, to blossom. If truthfully, we are serious. If truthfully, we want to get rid of hypocrisy, the hypocrite life. Because God is not coming for hypocrites. God is not coming for lukewarm. He will say on that day, depart. I don't know you. You who are serving me, who are serving me anyhow. Today you are cold, tomorrow you are hot. God is not going to be flipping any mood swing and say, oh, you were having some flashes. You were having some mood swings. It's okay, my daughter, go. It won't happen. He said, just God. If some people were able to allow the Holy Spirit to help them display and demonstrate unconditional love, and they love to the very point of death. Example is Stephen. 
the point of death where blood was oozing out of him, he said, Father, forgive them. Don't hold it against them. Hey, what manner of man is Stephen? He's not even Jesus. Who, he is Stephen. And in our time, a pastor will tell you he's a mere dickie. A mere dickie of the church. When his enemies were stoning him to death, what did he say? He pleaded for mercy. That is the love we are talking about here. I, I, keep, I keep asking myself every day, if, if I come to that point, would I pray for mercy? Because when somebody does something that is very unfair to me, I'm tempted to say, God, deal with him. I am tempted to say, God, deal with this person. Deal with him. Instead of pleading for mercy and forgiveness, I want God to deal with the person. So where is the love of God in me? And as I'm asking myself this, ask yourself, where is the love of the Father in you? Are we praying that those who have done unfairly and unjustly, that God should punish them and deal with them? Or are we praying that they should be forgiven? This is where it starts from. Please, we must really dig within ourselves. Ask yourself. Is the love in my actions, in my words? Is it in our words? If it's in our words, then it means our heart is full of love. If not, then in our heart, there's nothing there. No love, no iota of love in there. Because out of the abundance of our heart, the Bible says that our mouth will speak. When you read Matthew chapter 12, that is how Jesus was talking. When you read verse 30, 31, up to 34, 35, 36, he was speaking about what is within the man. If it's a bad seed, bad, bad fruit will come out. If it's a good one, it displays. Praise the Lord. So may the Lord have mercy on us as, as he is teaching us today. We are going to live practical lifestyle of the Bible, of the scriptures, of the sermons we hear. And when that is happening, we will see the full power of God at work. We will see miracles, signs, and wonders that will follow us, that will back your lifestyle. That many will give glory to God because of you. Hallelujah. If we can practice anything we learn from today forward, ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost to overflow within your heart. Without him, we cannot do it. So that is the first thing the Lord is teaching us today. Without the Holy Ghost, none of the things Jesus did that we are going to look thoroughly into. Mm -mm, we can't do it. It will never happen. Beloved, it will never happen. Praise God. So let's look at Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Let's look at it. So the first demonstration, the first display, Jesus had the Father's love for the house of God, to teach in the house of God, to do something in the house of God. Hallelujah. To liberate people's mind in the house of God that all the things that was in him to set the children of God free. So that's the first thing we are looking at. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. In fact, from today, make time and read Luke chapter 4, the entire chapter, so that what the Lord is teaching us today will make a lot of sense to you. Hallelujah. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Please, as you read, take, take a, a keen look into every word that you are reading so that it will make deeper sense into you. Many people just read it without really looking at the sentence that has been constructed. This is where I bring your attention to. He said that at, as it is the custom of Jesus, it was what? The custom of Jesus. Again, I repeat, it was the custom of Jesus to what? Get into the synagogues and do what? And to preach. So when you combine the four uh, Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
maybe each chapter, uh, each opening chapters may start to talk about Jesus in a different way. But Luke, the book of Luke, actually give a systematic approach and systematic lifestyle of Jesus. Let me bring that to your attention. The book of Luke, how everything was in order, was written by Luke, the physician. So if you really want to see how things really, really went, start with Luke, among all the four Gospels. Amen. It was the custom of Jesus. Now we are talking about the love of the Father through Christ. This is our teaching series. The love of the Father, the practical love of the Father through the practical lifestyle of the Son, Jesus Christ. And we are reading right now that it was his custom to do what? To be in the synagogue. Jesus was born into the Jewish custom. And he went into the synagogues right after Galilee. When you read the previous uh, verses before the chapter, the verse 16. From Galilee, right from Galilee, he was going into uh, various synagogues, various temples. It was his habit. When he said, as it was his custom, it was Jesus' habit, his day-to-day -day lifestyle to get inside the temple and to reason with the people there. Now, bear in mind the uh, chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke. When I move uh, before the chapter 4, when you read the book of uh, Luke chapter 2, that chapter talks about how when Jesus was a young boy, he would sit in the synagogue for three days. The parents couldn't even find him. Okay? They could not find Christ as a young boy. When the, the day of pacification or whatever rituals is done, he stayed behind to listen to the law uh, degree holders to ask questions. So right from the childhood of Jesus Christ, he started demonstrating the love of the Father right from the house of God. He loved the Father's words, meaning the teachings that was going on about the prophet Isaiah, prophet Jeremiah, uh, Joel. He would sit down quietly, right? From a young boyhood. So, Maybe you didn't start loving God from your childhood, but now you have a child. Are you going to teach this child about the word so that the love of God will begin to grow within him, that he will desire the word of God. He will desire to be in the house of God. Or we are just, because we didn't have the proper background, the proper upbringing of loving God, or loving his house, or doing things in the house of God. We didn't have a parent, or a mother, a father, an auntie, someone who took care of us to really take us to the house of God. So whatever has happened in our past, now we are doing it for our children. We are transferring it. Because we have so many Christians that have neglected their children. When church is going on, they will let them do whatever. That is when the children are playing video games. That is when the children are, are, are doing all other things. They are on, on social media, and I'm talking about our time right now. The practical love of the Father starts with you and myself actually demonstrating our love for the house of God, for the things of God, for the work of God. Jesus started from there. Amen. Before he started uh, roaming the streets and telling them, repent, for the kingdom of God is at heart. He started from the synagogue. Charity begins at home. He started right from the, the temples. Hallelujah. Jesus was drawn towards his father's house and his father's word. So can anyone dispute the fact that Jesus loved the father? Because through his words, he kept saying, I love the father. The father loves me. Whatever the father tells me, that I do. Not even the devil can dispute that fact that indeed Jesus loved the father God. Even the, the devil was testifying in the synagogues 
the devil testified by by demons screaming in in some people's heart he said get out of here we know you you are jesus of nazareth the messiah and then jesus will tell them shut up shut your mouth come out of them the devil the demons were even protesting against jesus to leave the temples for them see our time has not come have you come to destroy us right in the house of god demons have taken over people and because of the love for the house of god the love for the word of god jesus was right there to reveal to them they were spiritually blind to the truth he wanted to what reveal it unto them and the demons started protesting that did not stop christ from still telling them the truth so even the devil testified that jesus loved the father can the devil testify that you and i we love jesus christ can he testify see even after they gave him the same chapter of luke 4 they gave him the scroll of isaiah and he read where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to liberate the poor, those in prison. At the end of, the, of, of that uh, prophecy, Jesus Christ began to what? Open their spiritual eyes to the truth. Bible says, and the people in the synagogue were filled with wrath. They pushed him out of the house of God. They pushed him out. They wanted to kill him. Simply because he told them the truth, because he wanted to enlighten them so that the scale, the veil from the time of Moses that had been on their eyes would fall off. They wouldn't listen. He said, Is that not the local boy here? Is that not the carpenter's son? Is his brothers not with us? Don't we know who his sisters have been married to? What, what is he talking about? He doesn't even have a degree. He's not a degree holder of the laws of Moses. What is he talking about? Let's compare that to our lives here. We are comparing it to our day-to-day our -day Christian lifestyle. What is our attitude towards our fellowship with God, even in our own home? Even in our own home. Jesus had his quiet time every day with the father and in the daytime he will enter the temple as well so from home to the temple to the synagogues and then he will get into the street i hope you are looking at the cycle how jesus demonstrated his his affinity his love for his father he proved it secretly he will go on the mount of olive pray throughout the night when evening comes, he will dispatch the people. He will get where he will have communication. Meditate. Jesus Christ. The devil was a witness, an eyewitness to Jesus' practical demonstration of how he always wants to be close to the Father. We have so many of us that the only time we really show that we love Christ is when we have been forced. Let me use the word forced. Because there are some people, if you don't even call them and tell them, oh, sister, I didn't see you at church. I didn't know you were, we, we didn't see you this. Then the excuses will start coming in. Excuses upon excuses. There are some Christians, they have to be begged. You have to beg them. You have to beg them practically. Beg them to do something in the house of God. You have to beg them. Simply because the love, <laughs> the true love is not, is not, not, not in us. Many of us, we have enslaved ourselves in our work. It's work, 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 work is all that we know. Forgetting that the one who has given us the ability to get up and go to that work is God. Some do not even, if you, if you ask some people in this world, when was the last time you were in church? That enemy has given them excuses why they don't even have to fellowship. But even if, if you ask them, so when is the last time you had a devotion with the Lord? That too will be a big problem. 
In fact, they will have a heated argument with you. The devil has enslaved us. There are some people, the excuse is their family. So the lifestyle of the believers of today, our fellowship with, with God is like a heavy duty, a heavy job. It's so heavy on our chest. And some are doing it out of convenience because it's convenient for them. Some are doing it because they are deeply troubled. Oh, the house is just five minutes from me. That's why I go there. That is called conveniency. If the house, if the church was uh, one hour from them, they would not go. God knows they will not go. Some people are in the church 24-7 because they need a child. Jesus is their what? Uh, go to, uh, give me, give me, give me, give me. If you don't give me, I'm going to see how my enemies are laughing at me. It's all about them. What they must have. What they must gain. How many times was Jesus praying that uh, uh, God should give him a, a car so that he can do his trip, his trekking business? Going from one. Jesus, uh, God, you know that I'm doing this for you. So please, let me have a motorbike. But we have men of God, we have women of God until we have a flat, a house, a two bedroom, a three bedroom, a whatever, not that we know that we have arrived then we don't see ourselves doing the work of God. We have some children. It goes both ways. Both those in authority as leaders in the churches and those church members, those they've been classified as church members. Me, I don't call anybody church member. Those saints of God. From being lazy to excuses, flimsy excuses that, that I give myself, that we give ourselves. It proved that we are in hypocrisy. It proves that what we are lying, we don't know what we are about. We don't know. Because it's all about us. It's all about us. There's no desire for to hear the Father's voice through the number one channel, which is the Bible. We don't have time for devotion. We don't have time for meditation. And we have to be begged to come to church. Some are going to church because if they don't go, their pastor will call them. Oh, sister, I didn't see you at church. Brother, I didn't see you at church. Oh, let me go so that I will avoid the pastor's questions. Where is the love of the Father in us? He moved from synagogue to synagogue, from Galilee. And then he came to Nazareth. Beloved, whilst he was in the temple of Nazareth, they wanted to kill him for speaking the truth. Did that stop Jesus? He slipped through their hands and went and when he went he went to jerusalem to go back into the same temple that never stopped jesus christ that never stopped jesus christ from doing what he's supposed to do it never stopped him but many have stopped church many have stopped fellowship simply because they got offended in the house of god if the house of god doesn't offend you if the house of God doesn't test your faith and your love, where else would you be tested? Where else would you? Where else would you be tested? Where else would you know that indeed the faith, the love, everything is at work? Where else would it happen? It has to start right from the church. They started to kill Jesus. They started the harsh and the root right from the temple, right from the synagogue. And many people are not getting that understanding that our persecution, our trials, our test, it has to start from the house of God, right from the house of God, the temple, where you see the brothers and sisters, the one we claim we love, that we have the same faith. They are the one who has, they are supposed to step on our toes. They are supposed to say rude words to us. They are supposed to say harsh words to us. And your demonstration of the love of God is to forgive them. They wanted to kill Jesus in Nazareth simply because he doesn't hold any degree in the law of Moses. He's the carpenter's son. They knew him when he was grow growing up. 
when he was helping his father, Moses, how dare you come and take the scroll and say that it is the, the prophecy is being fulfilled in you? Who are you? Your own family members, your own family people, they, they, your own saints, the saints that you worship, we tell, who are you? Who are you to direct me, order me around and tell me what to do in the house of God? And when that happens, you are to allow the overflow of the Holy Spirit. That brings a lot of the unconditional love of God. To say that I forgive, that won't stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do in the house of God. I will continue open-heartedly do my best for the Lord. Because it is the love of the Father that has consumed me. That was what Jesus did. Until we start the practical demonstration of the love, we are not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. We are the people God will say, I don't know you, get out. Depart. You hypocrites. May God forgive us and may God have mercy. May it not be us. May he not say that to us. It is about time we start living the practical. Practical, we have to practice it. I can't claim the love of God when I get so offended easily right in the house of God. I need to start pleading for mercy. Father, my sister is doing this to hurt me in the church. Father, forgive her. Let her know her wrong. Let her know what he's doing. I won't be so bitter in me to the point that I can't even pray. And when I see that sister, I have frowned my face. I don't even want to see that sister, so I won't come to church. And like I said, some are coming because of what they will what gain. The material things that we will live here. And let me tell you, Jesus said something to them before they, they threw him out. He said, I know you will say this. Physician, heal yourself. He said there were so many widows at the time of uh, Elijah. But God directed him to only one widow. There were so many people with leprosy in the time of uh, Elisha. But it's only Naaman. He wasn't even a, an Israelite. Naaman from Syria. God healed of his leprosy. We will be in the house of God. We will be in the churches of God. We will be in the ministries. Yet nothing will be done on us. Nothing will be performed on us because our heart is not right. Our heart is not right. We have refused to let the love of God move us to do what we have to do. It's because the pastor is the one ordering you. And some will have it at the back. They are doing it for the pastor, the leader. They are doing it for the leader. And to date, if that is the mindset we have, we ought to repent. We are hypocrites. So if it's not God first before any other human being or any other thing, any other glory, any other applaud. In fact, to be, I, I get, I get agitated. I get antsy when someone is saying, oh, I want to thank you for this or that. Mm -mm. I feel like I'm, I'm trying to interject or come between the glory of the Father. But many people don't get it. And until we get it, we are not going anywhere. We will be in the church and we will join the bad wagons of many are called. And the few will get into heaven. And we will wonder what happened to us. May God forbid that we will be among the many. I pray that you and I will be among the few. Because we show and demonstrate the practical love of the Father. We will end it here. It's a long series. We will take it to you and I. We can testify that the first teachings made me fix this in my life. And out of that, this is what I am seeing the Lord do in my life. So all this while, I, I have been my own enemy. I have been the one blocking my own blessing. I have been the one not doing the right thing to see the glory of God. May the Lord help us.
from this very day, from this very minute. May the Lord help us. May the Lord cause us to begin to practice, to practice. Jesus did the Lord. And I pray that we will have the time to go through everything that Jesus Christ did. Everything he did. God bless us all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you, man of God. Bless you also. We are going to pray. I am guilty. I believe you have also acknowledged something within your heart. We are pleading for mercy. And the next prayer is that, that the Holy Ghost will overflow in us. Because without it, as he has taught us, without him, without the Holy Ghost, we are not going to move an inch with this truth. We will receive the truth, but still will not be able to do it because the weakness is overflowing. We shouldn't allow weakness to overflow, but the Holy Ghost to overflow so that we can overcome our weakness. Let's begin to thank God and begin to plead for mercy and ask the Holy Ghost to overflow in us. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> Undoruma mama handara basia kandara mahandara baba bashi ndoro mahandara mama ndoruma baba bashi kandara bashi kandara mahandara mama mahandara mama ndoro basia kandara mama mahandara baba kandara mama mahandara baba bashi ndoro mahandara mama ndara masu ndoro bashi kandara mahandara baba hindara baba bashi kandara mahandara mama mahondoro mama we thank the Lord Jesus Christ for how far he has brought us. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray over our free will offering and our tithes as we lift it up. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the glory that which we have received from your abundance blessing that represents some so that 
that things in your household may, may go on smoothly. We pray that let everything our hands touch be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let our Amen. going out be blessed and let our coming in be blessed in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Father, bless and bless and bless every, the, even the non-living things in our household in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I pray that you will stop the devourer for our sake. That every day we'll be able to bring more into your house and into the world. So that many more things and many souls will be won for the kingdom. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for Amen. how far he has brought us. Amen. 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 St. Anna, what is the announcement for the day? Peace, the Lord.